I'm Ken Klippenstein with Breaking Points, The Intercept Edition. As Hollywood executives insist it is just not realistic to pay actors better wages, to quote Disney CEO Bob Iger, they are spending lavishly on artificial intelligence programs. In one case, Netflix is offering as much as $900,000 for one single AI product manager, that's one employee. As I recently reported in a story detailing AI-related job postings for some of the top studios in Hollywood, those job postings offer us an unprecedented look at how exactly Hollywood is pursuing uh, AI and integrating it into their uh, field. Whereas 87% of actors are not paid enough money to qualify for health insurance, every single AI job posting I could find paid at least six figures with many offering $300,000 or above. Hollywood's AI job postings are particularly audacious given the context in which they're occurring. Both actors and writers unions are on strike for the first time since 1960, over half a century ago, calling for better wages and regulations on studios use of AI. First of all, I'd like to dispel a common misconception. This idea that actors are paid the same extravagant sums of money that household names like George Clooney and Brad Pitt or Tom Cruise are. The reality couldn't be farther from that. The truth is that 87% of actors earn less than $26,000 a year, the cutoff to qualify for health insurance, according to SAG-AFTRA, their union. Shortly after the union authorized the strike, uh, which remember is the first time that both the actors and the writers strike um, have, 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 have coincided in, in over half a century, the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, the trade association representing the TV and film companies negotiating with the actors and writers unions, announced a, quote, groundbreaking AI proposal. Now, if you think that that sounds ominous, that's what the writers and the actors also thought. So while the trade association declined to go into specifics, Duncan Crabtree, Ireland, the chief negotiator for the actors union, described the proposal as follows, quote, they propose that our background performers should be able to get scanned, get paid for one day's pay, and their company should own that scan, their image, their likeness, and to be able to use it for the rest of eternity in any project that they want with no consent and no compensation. So um, the actors that I spoke to for this story, uh, and a lot of actors that you know you can find their uh, public comment, they've made clear they're not against AI, they're not against technology, they're against it being deployed unfairly. They want to make sure that there are guardrails in place to make sure that they're uh, fairly compensated. So that proposal might sound familiar to fans of the dystopian science fiction TV series Black Mirror. An episode earlier this year titled Joan is Awful portrayed actress Selma Hayek locked in a Kafkaesque struggle with a studio which was using her scanned digital likeness against her will. Sound familiar? Obviously, the proposal did not go over well with the actors, as Rob Delaney, who turns out to be one of the lead actors in that same Black Mirror episode that I mentioned a moment ago, rather colorfully told me, quote, my melodious voice, my broad shoulders and dancers undulating buttocks, I decide how those are used, not a board of VC angel investor scumbags meeting in a Sun Valley conference room between Nias and IV cocktails or whatever it is that they do. <laughs> he actually said that, and my editor actually let me run it, so... <laughs> Gotta love Rob. He's always able to bring his bring his quotes to life. Um, but it's not just the actors that want protection against AI written into their contracts. Writers as well, represented by the Writers Guild of America, that's their union, have been on strike since May 7th. It hasn't received as much attention since, you know, writers um, perhaps are not as recognizable as some of the uh, biggest actors. But they've been on strike for weeks now, asking for similar labor safeguards against um overreach by AI. John August, a screenwriter for films like Big Fish and Charlie's Angels, explained that the Writers Guild of America wants to make sure that, quote, chat GPT and its cousins can't be credited with writing a screenplay, which if they don't get that into the uh, contract language is something that could happen. So one job posting, I, one job posting they found uh, offered $300 for two hours of work to, quote, express different emotions and improvise brief scenes to train an AI database to better express human emotions. This is a job for actors. Although the job posting by a company called Realize did not mention working with streaming companies, Realize's website prominently features the logos of Netflix and Hulu. The job posting is brazenly pitched for striking workers, insisting that since the gig is for research purposes only, it doesn't qualify as struck work. That is, it doesn't uh, violate the requirements of a strike. But an AI expert I interviewed said that the boundary between research and commercial work is blurry at best. Quote, it's almost a guarantee that the use of this research when it gets commercialized will be to build digital actors that replace humans, said Professor Ben Zhao, who teaches computer science at the University of Chicago. The professor went on to say, the research side of this is largely a red herring. Industry research goes into commercial products. And so as the professor explained to me, there are innumerable examples of corporations that have their own research uh, uh, wing that is then passed on to their commercial wing, not to mention universities that sell uh, the research that they do to corporations. He said, quote, this is the same bait and switch that OpenAI pulled years ago. He uh, He's referring to 
um, the Artificial Intelligence Open Network, a German nonprofit that created the AI chatbot, Open Assistant. Open AI is a nonprofit that creates things like ChatGPT and Dolly, which you might be familiar with. He goes on to say, download everything on the interview on the internet and no worries about copyrights because it's a nonprofit and research. The output of that becomes a public data set, then commercial corporations who supported the nonprofit, by the way, take it and say, gee, thanks, how convenient for our commercial products. So that distinction between research and commercial is really misleading, the, the professor explained. Um, let's go back to Netflix's $900,000 AI product uh, manager posting that I mentioned at the beginning. Different forms of AI have been around for years, a fact that many proponents are quick to point to in order to allay fears. But all of the job postings I covered in my article and that I reviewed were what's called generative AI. So that is the kind of AI that's used to create content, as Professor Zhao explained to me, whereas previous iterations of AI focus on things like algorithmic recommendations, categorizing information, so you're on Netflix and you see something that's like, um, you know, zombie noir or something. That was what the old uh, kind of AI is, is like. This new, this brave new world of generative AI, though, can generate text, static artwork, and even moving active deepfakes of people's faces and bodies. Netflix's AI product manager posting points to AI's uses for content creation, saying that, quote, artificial intelligence is powering innovation in all areas of the business, including by helping them to, quote, create great content. They're using this for content creation. It's not just classification. Netflix's AI product manager posting alludes to a sprawling effort by the business to embrace AI, referring to its, quote, machine learning platform involving AI specialists across all of Netflix. So this is so much bigger than just the one $900,000 posting. A research section on Netflix's website described this machine learning platform, noting that while it was historically used for things like recommendations, which I mentioned before, it's now being used to create content. It says, quote, historically, personalization has been the most well-known area where machine learning powers our recommendation algorithms. We're also using machine learning to help shape our catalog of movies and TV shows by learning characteristics that make content successful. We use it to optimize the production of original movies and TV shows in Netflix's rapidly growing studio, end quote. So Netflix is already putting that AI technology to work. On July 6th, the streaming service premiered a new Spanish reality dating se series called Deep Fake Love, in which scans of contestants' faces and bodies are used to create AI-generated deep fake simulations. That's when they, you know, just create the likeness of a person, but it's not actually real. Um, in, an, in another job posting, Netflix seeks a technical director for generative AI in its research and development tech lab for its gaming studio. Um, something I hadn't realized is video games employ a lot of voice actors and writers, so they're people that also have a stake in this and are also taking part in the strike. Netflix offers up to six hundred fifty thousand dollars for generative AI tech, for uh, the generative AI technical director role. Just to give you guys a sense that that nine hundred thousand wasn't just cherry picking. Um, video game creators, as I mentioned, have expressed concerns about this. Uh, one major game developer, Ubisoft said that uh, it is already using generative AI to write dialogue for non-player characters. Netflix, for its part, advertises that one of its games, a narrative-driven adventure game called Scriptic Crime Stories, centered around crime stories, of course, uses generative AI to help uh, tell those stories. It seems clear that the entertainment industry is willing to take massive investments in generative AI, uh, the University of Chicago professor Zhao told me. Um, he wanted to say, but they're just not willing to uh, take on potentially hundreds of millions of dollars uh, of cost for the actual actors themselves. Happy to do that with technology and AI, but not for the actors themselves. And doesn't that just say everything? It's not that they don't have enough money. It's a question of priorities. And so I want to just close by saying how extraordinary this moment um, in our history is where, um, you know, the, the writers are joining arms with the actors. I mentioned before that hasn't happened in half a century. And this is happening against the backdrop of a um, broader labor ferment. Um, in the case of the Teamsters Union, which represents all the UPS drivers and people that uh, deliver packages, uh, they very recently um, have been offered uh, a deal that I can't imagine at any other point in time on uh, management would have offered uh, labor. Now, you know, we can debate whether they should be pushing for more, and, and indeed we're going to find out soon if they're going to accept that offer, but uh, it's only happening because of the uh, macroeconomic environment we find ourselves in when. Uh, Unemployment is relatively low. Workers have more bargaining power, and so they're able to demand more things. It's unclear how long this is going to last, but for the time that it does, I think it's extremely important, uh, certainly for the press to pay close attention to it, and also for the general public to, because uh, it's well demonstrated that labor unions not only improve uh, pay of people that are members of those unions, but it has a buoying effect of uh, raising wages and benefits in the private sector as well as they try to, as those jobs try to be competitive with the union jobs that exist. So again, really unusual moment, um, um, you know, labor victories that are certainly unprecedented in my 
lifetime in which you know we can say are modest and 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 hope will hope will grow but but certainly an improvement over the last um, several decades so once again i'm ken klippenstein with uh breaking points the intercept edition thanks so much for joining me guys